Hi, this is Pastor Douglas. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Grace on the Go. As we move forward this week, digesting what Pastor Travis preached on this past Sunday, blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy, Matthew 5, 7, one of the Beatitudes in the Sermon on the Mount. I want to look at kind of mercy in conjunction with another aspect uh, of God's character, uh, grace. Now, these two things come together and they merge together, and we find that that mercy's cousin is grace. They're, they're interconnected with what they are. So let's, let's review. Mercy is obviously that we deserve something, yet God takes it away from us. So what is that we deserve that God took away? Well, the wages of sin is death. And so because we have sinned, the wage, the, the payment, think of it as a, as a job. You know, if you make you know, $10 an hour, that's your, your way, that's your payment for your work. So we sinned, that was our work whatever our wages, whatever our payment, it is death. That that's what we deserve. We don't deserve to have a relationship with God. We don't deserve uh, eternal life in heaven with him. We don't deserve any of that. We deserve death and punishment. Yet God takes away that punishment from us. And so it's the removal of what we deserve. And so what is grace? Grace is, is the giving of something that you don't deserve. So it's kind of the, the opposite of mercy, and that's why I call it mercy's cousin. It's because grace is giving you something you do not deserve. And so what is that? And, and how do these two things co-mingle together? Because uh, really they are they're inseparable. And so let's go to, to Ephesians 2, my, my favorite sp spot in scripture, starting in verse 4. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, Made, a, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. And so we see that because of his, his mercy, it says he's rich in mercy, that, that we deserve something and he took it away from us. And this is grace. That, that what we were given instead uh, as we move forward, uh, by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not yourselves, but it's the gift of God. And so this gift is in salvation. It's in that God came and died for us. You know, there's no reason, there's no nothing in us, nothing about us that God said, hey, because you've done this, because you've done that, because you are this way, I'm going to send my son to come and die for you. No, we don't, we don't see any of that. Even going back to Genesis 3, when we see the fall, when we see that, that Adam and Eve walk away, you know, the first sin, eating of the fruit in the garden, that God says, hey, I'm going to come and speaking to the serpent, I'm going to crush your head and he's going to bruise and you're going to bruise his heel. That we see this, this act that, hey, Jesus is going to come and save you even the, in the midst of sin. That, that there's no reason why God said to them right there, I'm going to come save you, except for the fact that he is gracious and merciful. There's nothing about us. You know, the start of chapter two, you were dead in the trespasses of your sins. Like we were dead in sin. We were stuck in sin. There's nothing about us that, that God said, hey, I have to come and save them because of this. There's none of that there. It is 100% a free gift of God that he comes and he gives us Jesus. And so not only is it just mercy that he takes away the punishment, he takes away what we deserve and leaves us alone. But no, then that free gift of salvation, uh, that free gift of imputed righteousness that we see in, in Romans 5, that because of Jesus, if we have faith in him, if we receive him, if we believe and trust in him, that we receive, it is imputed to us, his righteousness. And so the punishment is taken away, the righteousness is given to us, and now we can stand before God. And when he says, hey, why should I let you into my heaven? Our only answer is, well, you shouldn't. There's no reason why you should except that Jesus came and gave me his righteousness and through his act took away and paid for the punishment that I deserve. So the punishment was paid, not by me, not by you, but by Jesus. And the righteousness was earned, not by me, not by you, but by Jesus. And so our only appeal to God is the blood of Jesus. It's saying, hey, he did it all. You know, the, the old hymn, 
Jesus paid it all and all to him I owe. That's what we have. And so this is where we see, you know, Ephesians 2, this, this co-mingling of mercy and grace coming together so beautifully. Thank you.